Hey friends! Today I'm going to be reading a story to you. I know that you all have heard of the story of the three little pigs. So today I'm going to read you a story about the three little pigs. But this is called the true story of the three little pigs. So, hmm, it looks like we're going to have to figure out who's telling the story. When we talk about point of view or narration, who's narrating the story, it means who's telling the story. So, is someone else telling the story, like an author, or is some, someone in the story, like a character, telling the story? This story is told from the point of view of the wolf. Right, so he's going to tell us his version of what happened. So this is the true story of the three little pigs. And it's a little different than the story that I know all of you have heard before. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on one little secret. Nobody knows the real story. Because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves love to eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were a big bad wolf too. But, like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing, it's all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Hmm. Way back in Once Upon a Time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold, and I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in their right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into somebody's house, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? But there was no answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. And that's when I felt it. My nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed. Achoo! And I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? That whole straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig. Can you see him? <laughs> Dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. Well, wow. I mean, it seemed a shame to just leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So yeah, I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little better, 
but I still didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother, and he was a little bit smarter, but not much. He built his house out of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house, but nobody answered, and I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming. I huffed, I snuffed, and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it. But this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig. Dead as a doornail. Wolf honor. Now you know. Food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. Think of it as a second helping. I was just, I was getting awfully full. <sighs> but my cold was feeling a little bit better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went on to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family because he had built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick door, but there was no answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about being impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar. He wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and make a nice birthday card instead when I felt my cold coming on. Oh, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Oh, then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fella, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down that pig's door, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner, and they figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound like a very exciting story. So they jazzed it up with all that huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me into the big bad wolf. Now that's it. That's the real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar? Hmm. So that is the true story of the three little pigs. A little different than the story you have heard about the three little pigs. This is called a fractured fairy tale and we're going to learn a little bit more about these but this one is one of my favorites so I wanted to share this first. All right friends have an awesome awesome day and I will talk to you soon. Bye!